Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you the self-powered LEGO ammunition. Goodness, that exposure. Anyways, this is not meant for tiny LEGO guns, but I feel that it's still important to show you this design anyways. So, this is composed of five different parts, and the way it works is it has a pre-compressed spring right here, and to release the energy you would need a sanded down 3mm dowel, which is the diameter that a minifigure hand can hold. And you just insert it into here, and that will cause the axle to get released from the base part and for the projectile to be released and fired. So you just push the axle in. I'm going to call this right here the primer, since it works like a center fire cartridge. And you just push that in and it fires. Then you're left with these two pieces right here. This is the rest of the case and these are to be thrown away. And you can hot glue these together and use an extractor to pull this out instead of having to rely on gravity for this to fall out. But the projectile, you have the spring which is the power source. This is a very specific spring with a certain weight a certain amount of coils that are compressed and it's just very rare so that's going to be the biggest limitation of this concept design and here's the projectile it's composed of a three stud long axle with a stud on the end and this base of a lever which is smooth so that assists in chambering and you also have the applicator or the gun and this does not actually apply any additional energy for the gun the length of the barrel does not affect the ballistics of the projectile because this is spring powered not pneumatically powered so a longer barrel would not increase the velocity of the projectile and this works like a real firearm that is striker fired and blowback because it doesn't have a locking mechanism for the bolt. But anyways, let's go ahead and open up the bolt. This right here is the barrel. It's very square looking and it doesn't have the top of the barrel. I just wanted to make that not there because A, I'm lazy and B, you can see the projectile sticking out. And this section of the barrel is called the chamber. That's basically where the cartridge is held and fired, <clears throat> that voice crack. But there's a special little spike that holds the case in place and still allows the projectile to fly out. So it's just a little spike. I'll go ahead and show you that. It's that little spike right there. That's what catches on the edge of the case, but doesn't interfere with the projectile. So I'll go ahead and remove that while I'm at it. And this piece right here is called the bolt, this part that slides back and forth. This does two things. One, it chambers the cartridge, meaning that it pushes it into the chamber like that. And it also holds the cartridge in place when you fire it so nothing flies back. There's a problem with the bolt though. It covers up the primer so you can't actually set off the round. So the solution is to go right through the bolt. This right here, that part that's sticking out, is the firing pin. And that is spring powered right here. And there's also a return spring up front so that it doesn't stay stuck out like that because if it does then it makes chambering less reliable and there's a little piece right here it's connected to this axle you cannot see it very well so it's right there in the back right there that circle looking part sorry for this bad camera angle you can probably see it from this angle better slides into there and then you pull it out to release it 
And since I removed the top piece of the barrel, you can now see this jutting out. Sorry for this terrible lighting. You can see that it just shoots out. And that is what strikes the primer. So that's the gun. And that's all the energy from this built up. All it does is just have that little piece flick out. It doesn't have a super hard prime and it doesn't provide any additional energy because all of that is already provided from the cartridge. And now we'll go ahead and load up around. If you're wondering how I'm locking this bolt back, there's this little piece right here that I'm pushing down. That's how I lock it in place. You just drop in your round, chamber it, and you cannot chamber this too fast or else the inertia of the projectile will actually cause it to release. So you can't have a super fast bolt. So now we'll go ahead and fire. And if you're thinking the gun provides any additional energy, I'll go ahead and remove the spring to prove you wrong. I'm just kidding. I'm just gonna go ahead and reassemble the cartridge without the spring. And then I'll go ahead and fire it again. This gun is not modified at all. It's just one clear edit. Just kidding, I made several cuts. But now, if you're curious if the gun provides any additional energy, you can see the spring is right there. The cartridge has no spring. And click, nothing. The projectile is still there. Go ahead and lock the bolt back, and you can see that it barely pushed the axle out. So let's go ahead and fire it again. Nothing. Cock it. And you can see that it's just not releasing. And it takes probably like eight different strikes before I can actually get this thing out. There we go. So now you can see that without the spring, it doesn't do anything. So it is the cartridge that's propelling the projectile. So that's just the concept design, and it has some potential, although the biggest limitation is the supply of these specific springs. I actually got this from a Nerf gun. There's only one per Nerf gun, so you're gonna have to spend essentially $25 per spring. <laughs> so the biggest part is the spring. But anyways, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.